Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the process of how I made 600 masks over the last couple of weeks. Let's go ahead and get on into it. So I started by cutting this pattern piece out of a piece of cardstock that was nine by six inches wide. And I ended up cutting my fabric on the fold so that my piece ended up being nine by 12 inches. I also cut this interfacing piece to add in the middle of the mask to add a little bit of stability and a little bit extra filter, but I actually ended up not doing this again um, with the rest of the pieces. I think I did maybe 20 to 30 masks this way, but that ended up making it a little bit harder to breathe and I actually had a hard time finding any interfacing, so I just went ahead and skipped this step in further masks um, that I made. So here I pinned the top of the mask together and left a gap about two to three inches wide so that I can pull all the material through to create the top of the mask. This is just a little scrap piece of fabric that I use to make sure my tension is right and that the thread is pulling correctly. Um, and then I always backstitch at the beginning and end of my stitches, especially on something like this where I'm pulling it through. So then I took a piece of elastic about seven inches long and inserted it into the inside of the mass. Here I pinned it down and made sure that it laid flat against the mask. I also found um, a lot of these techniques on YouTube just kind of looking around and I mean everyone's making masks right now so I'll link you to the ones that I ended up using. So as you can see I ended up with three pins, one on each end to hold the elastic down and then one in the middle. Um, my very first few sets of masks, this is how I ended up doing it. I later on didn't have that third pin in the middle to hold it just ended up being way too many pins going all over the place. I was able to do it with just the elastic uh, pins on the two ends. So I did that to both sides of the mask, taking out the pins as I went and making sure to back stitch. Once I was done with that, making sure all sides were completely sewn except that one gap in the middle, I went ahead and pulled the elastic through that hole that I had left along with the rest of the material and mask and making sure that the elastic actually grabbed onto that stitch, which I'm glad it did. So from here I went ahead and started doing the same process with the rest um, of the material that I had for that batch. As you can see, I moved on to the next day, and I think at one point my battery camera died and I just kept moving So this actually ended up it. being the second batch of masks that I made, which I'm actually glad I did it this way because I didn't end up filming the first way I was pinning each of the pleats together. It was a pain, it took forever, and it just was more and more pins. So I found this um, awesome YouTube video, which I will link down below, on how to pleat using your iron, and it was so much faster, made things so much easier. I mean, it's still a lot of ironing, but it works way better this way. Uh, making this mini mask, it was so nice uh, to be able to find something that actually ended up working for me. So these masks that I'm actually working on here were materials either just laying around um, that were left over from projects or previous things that we had done. Um, and some of them were actually some of Ryan's old shirts and then some of Ryan's co-workers old shirts. Uh, we are so grateful that they were able to provide us with those materials because the first batch I was able to make with materials that was just kind of lying around at home. I waited for some material that I had ordered online, um, but it took about two weeks for us to come in and, you know, we really wanted to get these masks out to everybody as soon as possible. So I'm so eternally grateful that people gave up their old shirts for me to do this too. And it was so nice of them and to provide like a fun, cool print. 
Now that I have all my pleats together, I went ahead and stitched a single stitch all the way around the edge of the mask, uh, of course starting with a back stitch. I'm going along all four sides of the mask to make sure that gap was closed up from that hole where I pulled the mask through originally. Alrighty, and there's a final product, a mask that has pleats and is all put together and then I went ahead and made I think about 200 more in this setting. So I ended up making about 600 masks uh, at 200 each setting. Uh, so it did take me a while to do so I'm so grateful for all of you that waited patiently to receive my masks and getting back and forth with me as far as me getting them to you. I really am grateful that you guys were so appreciative and um, understanding about how long it was taking me to do because it was quite a bit of work. So here's the final product. So like I said, I ended up making about 600 of these masks, so it was quite the process for me um, and learning and doing different things and I mean I've pretty much all uh, done a lot of these techniques before but to put them all together it was really fun to do and I was really excited to bring you guys along on this process. So thanks so much for watching, make sure to like and subscribe!